Hi there, this is Jennifer Clough, September 8th, 2009. Just a quick question about how to line up your head joint. It seems that people are still confused about the standard lineup where the center is of the blowhole is lined up with the center of the keys as opposed to the far side of the blowhole is lined up with the center of the keys. So I just want to start with the center of the blowhole lining up with the center of the keys doesn't work for people who have flat chins or thin lips. So Roger Mather in his book, The Art of Playing the Flute, estimated that 75% of people will find it best to line up the far edge, which is the splitting edge, with the center of the keys. And since probably 95% of American band flutists have it in their band book to line up the center of the blowhole with the center of the keys. I want to show the teachers and the students why this doesn't work for some 75% of the people. Now I've lined mine up the American band method way, center to center, to show the problems. And this is also on another video. You'll notice me repeating this. When the student's keys are tilting backwards, that is a sign that they should not be lined up center to center. So when I line up center to center, because I have thin lips and a flat chin, when I get my best tone, my keys are tilting backwards. Now for a beginner, this is particularly bad because the flute will really be unsteady when they change from C to D. The flute will roll in their hands which will either cause them to brace their right hand with the wrist cocked backwards, or it may cause them to really, really clamp with their right hand to try and keep the flute from rolling. This slows down the fingers. So this is why having your keys tilting backwards is a really bad way to play because it causes tension in the hands. So it's possible to play that way, but over time, it can be really problematic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change to the alignment of the far edge of the striking edge where the air splits is lined up with the center of the keys. Okay. And I have, you know, stickers on the back of my flute so I don't have to eyeball it all the time because that's the other thing I find annoying. No other instrument spends six minutes doing this. I mean, no, no other instrument does that. I don't know why flute players don't just stick a sticker on the back of their flute. Anyways, sorry, small rant. <laughs> I, just, I just hate that. You see all these flutists looking like they're using an archery bow and arrow, you know? Anyways, so when I have my far side lined up with the center of the keys, look at the relaxation of the two wrists. Okay, so that's how that looks. And no, you never see this in a flute magazine in the advertisement because in the photograph they're always trying to show the front of the keys and the front of the head joint lined up like this. So, okay. The other thing, oh, let me just show you one more thing. In beginners, when you see them going like this, like little tiny kids going like this, because they're lined up accidentally center to center because they think they should be, you'll see them try and get a good sound by arching their neck forward. And this is probably uh, the reason why you'll see people, beginners, trying to lean it on their shoulder as well. If they don't have their keys backwards, ask yourself, are they craning their neck forward? I wish I could, oh, there we go. This position is totally uncomfortable over time, and that's what people do when their flutes are misaligned, okay? Now, since I have probably three minutes left, let me see how many minutes do I have left? Oh yeah, I've got three or four minutes left. I'm gonna use this to explain what this is. We've talked about this tons of times. These are pencil grips. They come as little uh, foam tubes, and you slip them open with a pair of scissors, and you put blue tack, which is a poster, blue gum on them, which doesn't hurt your flute. Look, nice and clean underneath. It's even cleaner than the rest of the flute. 
If you put that on there, and this will help for people who feel that their index finger is all bent backwards and uncomfortable. When you put that on there, you no longer have to bend the finger so far underneath and then reach around, which for some people who aren't very flexible can be very um, tiring. This allows you to still you're resting the flute on the knuckle, but it doesn't have to be, the knuckle doesn't have to be contorted to accept the narrow diameter of the flute. The knuckle can be quite straight, so you can put one on, or I prefer two, because look at these long, extraordinarily long, narrow fingers with no strength. They have lots of flexibility, but no strength. So the flute still sits on the knuckle, but I don't need to bend my finger backwards. Look, it's right, it's vertical. Oops, keep moving my head going. Vertical. And you see how natural my hand position is? I'll stand back so you can look at my arm position. Okay? And the other thing, um, I actually invented the earlier version of the thumb port. The thumb port is, I used to have it as a cork, piece of cork glued on. And that was called the Clough Roll Bar, somebody called it that. I got the idea from Jacques Zune, who had a thumb button. And it, through history, there have been people who have had thumb buttons and little extending shelves built or soldered onto their flute. But I just made one out of a wine cork and I glued it on and I told everyone how great it was. And uh, Roger Holman developed a pre-adhesive glued on piece of cork called the Thumbelina, where you just pull off this, the backing. I think it's three to five dollars for one of those. And it glues right on. And of course it can be taken off um, when you sell the flute or whatever, but it stays on. Anyways, then Ho Fan Lee asked Roger Holman for advice on designing one out of plastic and rubber that would be mountable and changeable because you can sand them down and remodel them for individual um, problems. Now, I didn't need to sand down or remodel my thumb port at all, but I just wanted to point out that back in 1996 or something, maybe it was 97, I told everybody on the net about how great it was to have a, a, a little shelf where your thumb could actually hold up the flute without any effort whatsoever. And, um, and nobody believed me that it sped up the right hand, but it does. If you have an extraordinarily long thumb, or some people have really, really short thumbs, and you find that your keys keep tilting back because you can't get enough purchase with just the friction of the thumb on the silver of the flute, having a little shelf that sticks out like that, little shelf, allows you to rapidly move your fingers without the flute moving at all. Notice how my flute body never rolls or moves or anything. Well, that's because I have so much more purchase with the thumb under the little shelf to control the flute. And it also stops me from having to push the flute in so hard with my left hand, because all I do is when I need more security against my chin, I push forward with my right hand. There's C sharp, no fingers on except the pinky, but even without the pinky. The stability comes from me pushing forward with my right thumb, okay? So, what the thumb port also does for advanced flutists is you have a really fast pinky technique. So if you need to go to all the pinky keys really fast, it really works. Okay, I'm out of time, but I just had to. I'm out of breath. I'm so excited talking about it. But uh, yeah, back to teaching. Welcome back to fall. I love teaching. I love it when the the student is set up to succeed, and I think that's really what I'm what I'm all hot about talking here. Okay, see ya. Bye.